So originally I wanted to go to college, but my senior year was approached by the Marines. That got me thinking about the military. I uh, talked to my coach about it. He told me to talk to the Air Force recruiter. Talked to the Air Force recruiter. I also talked to the Navy. Uh, I talked to all the, all the recruiters. That I did my research. That's where I found your channel initially. And yeah, um, your, your videos really sold me on the whole Air Force lifestyle. But I ended up going to college for uh, for a little bit. Then I ended up deciding that that wasn't really the route I wanted to do. And I ended up going with the Air Force. Just got interested in it and went ahead and just pulled the trigger. So I've been in the Air Force for about two and a half years, and I'm an E-4. My job's name is Bomber Special Integrated Communication Systems and Navigation Systems, better known as ComNav. My AFSC is 2Alpha9X1. So when I went to MAPS, they gave me a list of jobs to pick. Uh, I picked 10 jobs, and one month into DEP, I, I got this job. So you could say I got the job fairly quickly. Uh, kind of, yes. Uh, so I scored uh, pretty high in the electrical aptitude area. So avionics was perfect. Uh, I also put down other avionics jobs like uh, electronic warfare and flight controls, but I ended up getting calm nav, which was uh, my number two pick. So I'm glad I did. Uh, some other jobs I was interested in were uh, load master, but I didn't have depth perception, so I wasn't really able to get that. I signed a four-year contract. I just decided it was better for me. Um, for cross-training opportunities and just in case I didn't like the job or the Air Force. If I thought this wasn't for me, I could get out at four years compared to six. That's an extra two years. And for cross-training opportunities, uh, you you have the opportunity to cross-train a little bit quicker with a four-year contract than you do with a six-year contract. So I, I just thought it was a better fit for me, and I'm glad I did it. My tech school was in uh, Shepard Air Force Base, which is in Wichita Falls, Texas. It's in the northwest uh, part of Texas. It's about two and a half hours from Dallas and about three hours from OKC. Uh, it's, it's a little small town, has a few things to do. And if you want to make a drive, you can go to a major city, so it's not, it's not in a bad location. Uh, my tech school is about six months long. Depending on uh, what, what time you got there, it depends uh, when you start your class. So I was pretty lucky as soon as I, I got to to Shepherd, I started my class like the next week, so it was fairly quick. There's other people who get there and have to wait uh, two weeks or three weeks for the next class to start. Our test school is split up into two parts. Uh, the first part is AVF, that's about two months long, and AVF stands for avionics fundamentals. That's where you pick up the basics on avionics. Uh, looking at circuits, um, the basic components and circuits, uh, computers, and gates, or gates, that type of stuff. And then the second part of the tech school is follow-on. That's where you learn your actual job, like the common app portion. Of, so like communication systems and navigation systems. Uh, for communication systems like radios, um, anything like that, anything used to communicate inside or outside the jet. And for navigation systems like radar or some form of GPS. I personally really enjoyed tech school. It was really, really fun, really good experience. It's my first time away from home, so it's pretty cool. You get your own, door, your own dorm room and you have two other roommates. So there's three people in the room. You get inspected about once a week, every two weeks, depending on um, their schedule at the time. You'd have PT in the morning if you're on day shift and if you're on swing shift, you'd have PT around noon. Oh yeah, and for our tech school, you have the you have two options: uh, day shift and swing shift. You don't get to pick; they pick for you. Uh, the DFAX food was amazing. Uh, we would march to class in the morning and come back in the afternoon. They had a lot of programs on base, like uh, different road programs. So there was there was a lot of opportunity to do different things on base, which was pretty cool. The gyms were nice. Uh, met a lot of cool people that I still keep in touch with today. Played a lot of pool, ping pong, and yeah, I had a really good time. Also, I had to keep up with the studying, but I can honestly say I really enjoyed tech school. So for our job, we're shredded out to specific airframes. So depending on your shred, depends what airframe you get. But all the bases we're able to get uh, go to are Dice Air Force Base, which is in Texas, Ellsworth, which is in South Dakota, Minot, which is North Dakota, Barksdale, Louisiana, Whiteman, Tinker, which is in OKC, Elmendorf, Alaska, Robbins, Georgia, off it, Nebraska. And those are all the bases we're able to go to. Depending on your shred, depends which bases you go to. It, uh, like, let's say if you get a, a certain shred, your base options would go down to like 
two or three bases. But once you hit tech sergeant, you can um, swap over to a different airframe or and go to a different base. So basically, my job is we're we're maintainer. We we uh, take care of uh, our airframe. We work. We keep all the all our systems up to date. Make sure they're all running properly, so the air crews are able to use informations. Uh, make sure the communication systems are working well. Uh, make sure the navigation systems are, are working well. We do schedule maintenance, just upkeep on the system. Uh, we we do troubleshooting on if there's an issue on the jet, we troubleshoot it down, swap out the parts. Um, we also look at circuits to look at the the power flow so we can figure out which to help in the troubleshooting process. We we swap out relays, parts, uh, yeah, in basic nutshell, we just maintain our systems. So for a typical day for me would be, I'd go into work, I'd get turned over from the previous shift, they tell us they did this, this, and this, that way we, we don't repeat the same steps if we're working a certain issue, and if they troubleshot to a certain step, we know to tr start troubleshooting from that step, that way we don't repeat the same issue, we we'll see turn over to see what jobs they've already completed, and what issues might occur on shift, anything like that. And then after we get turned over, we, we go to roll call. That's where they take accountability of all the shops and tell us our prior, our priorities. Like, if we're going to be launching a jet, that we're going to have to um, provide support to the launch. They also tell us which uh, jets we need to work on that day, which issues we need to work. Yeah, that's pretty much it for priority. For the priorities, they give us a roll call. After roll call, we go to CTK, which is the tool crib. That's where you check out tools. We go over there, check out our tools for the day. Once we get our tools, we load them up. We load them up on our trucks. We share these trucks with, with these other shops. We ride around the flight line. It just makes it easier to move around the flight line instead of walking everywhere. So we load up the stuff on the trucks, depending if we have launch or not. If we have launch, then we would provide support for the launch, and we would ride around on the truck. And the jets would would be coming up on engines. The crew would be up there. Crew chiefs would be downstairs on a concord talking to the crew. And if they have any issues, the, the crew chiefs will call us over. Uh, we'd go up the jet, talk to the pilots, and try to troubleshoot the issue and see if we can fix it before they take off. And if we're able to fix it in a timely manner, we fix it. If we're not, they, then the crew might have to shut down and swap jets. After uh, we're done launching, we work on other priorities. We work other issues on different jets. And we would troubleshoot, we would, we would troubleshoot issues uh, on, our, on our systems. If we had a, an issue with the with one station, could not hear signals coming in. We would troubleshoot that down to to certain part, swap out the part, and then do an ops check and see if that worked. If if the part we swap uh, fixed the issue, yeah. So we'd work different priorities after launch, and then once the aircraft comes back down, we would debrief the crew. We would all go to this room with the crew, and we talk to the crew, asking if they have any, had any issues with the. Uh, our systems, if everything went smoothly, if anything strange popped up while they were in the air, and if anything happened in the air, we would ask questions to help us uh, troubleshoot more efficiently because we can't recreate everything that's up in the air on the ground. So it's good to ask them plenty of questions on the systems and see if anything they say can help us troubleshoot the issue. And after we're done de debriefing and working our priorities on the on the line and shift is coming to an end we would turn in our tools and then we'd all walk back inside to the office and wait for the next shift and when the next shift comes in we would give them turnover and then once they go to roll call and come back we then we're done for the day and we have three shifts we have a day shift a swing shift and a mid shift and that's a typical day for me and that's that's the basics of what i do oh uh, really just be productive like have your head in the TO, be knowledgeable on your systems, get good at your job. Uh, the better you know your systems, the the better you're going to be at your job, and the more opportunities you're going to have to TDY and deploy or do other things like uh, work in CTK or go to Honor Guard or do anything like that. So I highly recommend you be productive at work. Also outside of work, um, take claps, take college courses. Uh, it'll really help you out. If you're going to stay in or if you're going to get out, if you're going to get out of the college courses, we'll help you get a degree and do something on the civilian side or get certifications that will help you do stuff on the outside.
But if you're going to stay in college courses and cert certifications, also make for really good EPR bullets, which should help you uh, go for BTZ if that's what you want to do, or just have a really good um, EPR. But yeah, that's my advice. Uh, also have a positive mindset, and yeah, just have fun.